All right. Okay. So the first one here is that, um, well, I guess I didn't give you the heads up, but if anytime you see a gas, it should be KP. Um, if, you, if, if you use KC, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to do it in KP because aqueous solutions, um, we can use concentration, but in general, for gases, it's usually partial pressure that they'll give you. So, but it doesn't change how you do the equation. It doesn't change. So, KP equals uh, O2, partial pressure of O2 raised to the third, divided by the partial pressure of O3 raised to the second. So if you did concentration of O2 cubed, concentration of O3 squared, it's the same thing. So if there's any gas anywhere, you can use the pressure one? Yeah, the question will dictate what you use. If the question gives you concentration, then you use concentration. If it gives you pressure, then you use partial pressure. But yes, in general, it's pressure. It's hard to, to, to see this until we do a practice problem. I just want to make sure you guys know how to set it up. Now, um, the next one. So KP equals um, partial pressure of NOCl squared divided by partial pressure of NO uh, squared times partial pressure of Cl2. So again, we're just practicing how to set it up. So products squared Reactant squared times reactant. The concentration pressure is a little bit irrelevant in my opinion. You just have to know what numbers to plug in where depending on the question. Question. So again, products over reactants, raise them to their coefficients. That's what I'm trying to get you to learn. Because if you can't set it up, then there's no way to answer the problems. Next two. Remember what I told you in the homework when it added, oh, I have all this stuff I need to talk about. After this, we'll talk about it. Um, it, it, it applies if it's related to this. Remember those equilibrium questions where it was it added solid car calcium carbonate and there was no effect? Yeah. yeah. Solids and liquids don't belong in equilibrium expressions. And I don't think I did a great job explaining that. So here we go. If, uh, if you have a container with gases and solids in it, and you add a solid, it doesn't affect the volume or pressure inside that container. Therefore, it doesn't really affect concentration or pressure. So another way to think of it is if you have a bunch of gases okay, floating around in this thing here, and you have a little pile of solid here, you add a little bit more solid, the amount of space these gas particles have to bounce around doesn't really change, unless you added a massive amount of solid. Usually the questions say they add a small amount. So if you add a small amount of solid, or even liquid at the bottom, unless you add a lot, a ton of it, the, the amount of space that the gas particles have to move around doesn't really change. So your pressure and volume will be basically constant, won't be affected by that, so the equilibrium doesn't change, because you're not causing it to shift. So that's, I think, a better way. I didn't, I guess it didn't occur to me. I didn't think to explain it that way, so I apologize. But that's a better explanation, which is good because you need to know now that this doesn't belong in your equilibrium expression. Neither does that. Neither does that. They belong in the reaction, but they have nothing to do with the equilibrium constant. And it's because of what I just said. Unless you're increasing these or decreasing them by dramatic amounts, it doesn't really affect the conditions for the gas. Does that make a little bit of sense? Yes. Hopefully. So, so when we write equilibrium expressions, solids and liquids do not go in the equilibrium, equilibrium expression. What does that leave us with? Gases and aqueous. Gases and aqueous. Because aqueous, now we have particles dissolved that's different. Um, but that's a whole different equilibrium constant. That's called KSP. We'll get to that down the road. So for the third and fourth one, here we go. Kp would equal uh, partial pressure of CO, uh, that's it, times the partial pressure of CO2 times the partial pressure of H2 here. So there you go. Products divided by reactants. And then the last one, Kp would be 
partial pressure of CO2 squared divided by partial pressure of CO. Oh, that looks like cobalt. Sorry. There we go. So I actually had a whole bunch of notes that I just kind of skipped over because I put it all in one example. So you don't add solids, don't add liquids in your equilibrium expression. I know there's a lot to remember in school in general and in this class. That's one more thing. you got to remember that. And again, it's because the volume of the reaction doesn't really change too much. Um, product over reactants, raise it to the coefficient. All right. Let's do a sample problem here. Um, Grab your books. Grab your books. Go to page. Okay, go, I'll go to page uh, 625. 625. Ben, you don't have one? No, I'm not either. Ben, you got your book? Okay. Six twenty-five. The only reason I'm going to that page is just another brief uh, example of those graphs. Okay, how do you know when it reaches equilibrium? Right, where they stay constant. Okay, they stay constant. What's the difference between A, B, and C? Uh, well, it says it at the bottom there. Change of concentration NO two and N two O four with time in three situations. A you have only NO2 present, and then it obviously is um, reacting or turning into uh, N2O4. Some of that's being produced. And then initially N2O4 is present in B, and then in C, initially a mixture is present. In each case, equilibrium established to the right of the vertical line. So just different ways to see the same kind of concept there. Um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Just talking, all right. Um, okay, uh, flip the page. Look at page 627. There's the, uh, on the right side, there's that symbol. K is greater than greater than one. K is less than less than one. If you look just where it says figure 14.3, um, it says at equilibrium, there are more products and reactants and the equilibrium is said to lie to the right. In the opposite situation, when there are more reactants and products, the equilibrium is said to lie to the left. Remember, they can still be changing at the same rate. It's just you have more products in one situation and then less products or more reactants in the other. Flip it. There is an equation. Um, I will give you one example here, but it's really not used too much anymore. Um, I want you to write it down underneath these examples. It's um, the bottom of 628. Very bottom. 14.4 is over on the right side there. It's KP equals KC times RT raised to the delta N. Go ahead and write that in your notes. It's not on the equation sheet. I don't think I've ever seen that on an AP test, so I'm not going to really hammer that. But I just, it, it does exist. It is a way. 
to relate KP and KC. KP equals KC times RT raised to the delta N. You guys with me here? Yes? Okay, write that down. What's the uh, delta N? Moles of products minus moles of reactants, right? As long as we have gases there. So we're going to use that in an example here in a second. All right. But I just, I want to throw it out there. We're not going to really do a whole lot with that. Um, but anyways, um, that is something that if you know the KC, you know the temperature, then you can find KP. If they don't give you partial pressures, they give you concentrations, you can find KC, you can find KP using that equation as long as they give you the temperature. Um, bottom of 629. Note that it is generally practiced not to include units for the equilibrium constant. In thermodynamics, the equilibrium constant is defined in terms of activities rather than concentrations. What is the K, so we've gone over this a few times now, what does the K really tell us? What is the whole point? What are, we, what are we doing with that K? When we get a number for K, what does that tell us? There's no units because it's not actually I don't want to say it's not a real number, but it's not measuring anything. It's just telling us what? Which, right, which side of the equation the reaction lies on or favors at equilibrium. So it, there's no units because it isn't a number you can do anything with. It just tells you, okay, we're either shifting and making more products, so shifting right, or we're shifting left, making more reactants at equilibrium. At equilibrium, you'll have more products or more reactants. So I just wanted to make that clear. There's really no units on there. Um, all right. What I want to do, there was a good problem in here. Let's do, actually, sorry, go to page 633. 633. That This is kind of what I was, talking about 633 look at the bottom 14.4 14.4 says in a and b the equilibrium pressure of co2 is the same at the same temp despite the presence of different amounts of CaCO3 and CaO what, what they're getting at if you look at the tube connected to the flask to the container that's mercury the level of the mercury is the same in both of them because solids don't affect equilibrium that the picture is trying to show you that that if you change the amount of solid, really, if you look above the picture there, 14.8 says Kp equals PCO2. So the partial pressure of CO2 is the only thing that matters. The solids don't really affect anything. So it's just another, another picture there trying to explain that. So the solids and liquids don't, don't really affect it. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's go back to page 6, 20, nope, 6, 631. I want you to do the practice exercise on top of 631 in your notes. Practice exercise 631 where it says CO plus Cl2 yields COCl2. And then it says at 74 degrees, it gives you concentrations. Calculate the equilibrium constant. Go ahead and do that. So write that equation uh, in your notes, write, write the whole question so you have it in your notes and solve for Casey.